Hello, long lost YouTube family. It's been a while since I shared a video. In fact, I am about to show you a vlog that I took over a week ago and it has sat on my camera untouched because life just got crazy after that and I wasn't filming nor editing. And that's what I'm gonna explain to you. So I'm gonna give you a little update on where things are right now in life. And then I'll go ahead and show you that vlog that I took that shows some more of the progress. As you can see, we've made a lot of progress. We even have curtains in here. <laughs> Still, still not living in this room, but lots, lots of changes, good changes. But we ended up, um, well, hang on a second. Before I tell you the bad news, let me tell you some good news. You guys know how much we love Shepherd's Crook Coffee. It's just this small family that we met when we were at a Homestead Expo two years ago. We just fell in love with their family and their coffee. And I actually have a coffee sensitivity that I have never been able to regularly drink coffee without getting heart palpitations. Well, I can drink their coffee every day without any issues because it's so pure and high quality. Isn't that awesome? So we have talked to you guys about them for so long that I finally reached out to her and I was like, hey, could we do like a fun, you know, giveaway or something for everybody? And she said, not only that, but let's do a discount code for you guys. The holidays are coming. It would be a great time to order a coffee for a loved one or for yourselves. And she is giving you guys a 25% off one-time coupon. I should say they because it's Laura and her husband. Isn't that awesome? So I think uh, Crakey25 is the code, but I'll put the link down in the... Um, description box for you and also if you would like a chance to win the coffee of the month which is the homestead blend so good my door is squeaking sorry um just go ahead and let me know in the comments yes i'd like to be entered and then we'll put y'all in a drawing and pull an email out so okay that's the good news okay this was the door squeaker <laughs> Okay, so the hard news, let me start with back earlier this week. We had a tragedy here on the farm. Early in the morning, Jason had just left for work and Samuel and James came in saying that Fern, our dairy cow, was dead. And I just couldn't believe it. You know, dairy cows are a huge animal on the farm, not like a huge part of your family, I guess. You get really attached to them because you are with them so much and they become like a family member and I just couldn't believe it. So I ran outside and I saw her, like she was clearly gone, but boy, I'm telling you, I got so emotional. It was rough. It was really rough. The whole, I just don't even want to go into it again, but um, I ended up calling Jason and I was so upset that he turned around. He didn't even make it to work. He turned around and came straight home and the rest of that day was just kind of a blur. Um, you took care of her body because that's a whole thing, you know, when you're talking about a, a huge animal. Um, and I took most of the kids and went to the library just to do something because my I was just so sad. And then on the way home, um, we stopped to get some food. And I was, because I hadn't fed anybody lunch, it was like 2.30 and I was just so out of it. So we stopped by Aldi on the way home because I thought, okay, I'll just pick up some, you know, deli meat and cheese and whatever and have like some quick sandwiches or something. I just couldn't even think. I was so upset. And when I was walking through the aisles, I was like, oh, their chicken is really cheap, like some chicken thighs. So I'll just get that and cook it for dinner because then I won't have to think about dinner. It was already, you know, in the refrigerator. So got home, made up for dinner. Um and went to bed. The next morning we get up and we're trying to do our thing, you know, get on with how, um, just the normal routine of life. And I got a phone call later in the day, not a phone call, a message later in the day from another family that we'd met this year at the Homestead Expo that they're interested in some of our puppies that we have for sale. And so they were going to drive up and just look at the puppies because they're, they're too young for homes yet. And so we were like, well, we had to invite them for dinner. They were driving over two hours to come see puppies. So I was like, okay. So for lunch, we had the leftover chicken from Aldi, just real quick. And not everybody ate it, but most of the people eat it, ate it. Some people did other things. And then we had them over, we just enjoyed them so much. This is a long story, but I promise it's going somewhere. Just this wonderful night. They stayed late because we just enjoyed their fellowship so much. So it was probably like almost... I don't know, like 9.45 when they left. And 
it was so weird. So about like 15 minutes after they left, we started feeling sick, several of us. So all of a sudden Lydia throws up. I started feeling so sick that I was like, I've got to be imagining things. Like there's no way I can go from feeling okay to this sick in like 20 minutes. Like, you know, it can't even be possible, but sure enough, I start throwing up. It's just, that night, it was just domino, domino, domino. Uh, like kids just kept coming out until they were laying all over the living room. I was vomiting violently. It was crazy. Jason stayed strong, so he took care of everybody all night long. It was just one person after another. It was rough. And so I'm just like thinking and thinking, what could it be? Like we've never had a flu hit all of us that fast. It just, you know, couldn't be. So I started thinking maybe it's food poisoning. I'm like adding up who ate the chicken for lunch. Like maybe I didn't cool it down well enough the night before and then heated up wrong. I'm just like trying to think of everything. And it seemed like everybody who had eaten that chicken for lunch was the crew that was all sick that night. So I was just like, okay, we've got food poisoning. Like that's how extreme it felt. I'm still not sure because <sighs> Friday came people are still starting to recover and we're like okay we're starting to feel better you know we're, we're getting over the thing but then by Friday night maybe I'm losing track of my days um, kids that hadn't eaten the chicken for lunch started feeling sick and did some vomiting too so you know that kind of blows my theory out of the water I don't know we are now all the way through the weekend we just kind of laid around a lot over the weekend we just felt weak from not eating for a couple days and we're into Monday and Lydia is still saying that her tummy hurts. You know, so I, I don't, I don't know what to say, but last week was just rough emotionally, physically. It was just a hard week. Hence why I did nothing <laughs> relating to videos or anything. I was just trying to survive. So that's kind of my little story. Um, I'm gonna now take you back over a week and show you what happened before all of that. There's Manu! Pick him in! Alright, again, Ben Ben. You ready? Where's Ben Ben? Pick a boo! <laughs> <laughs> What was you that? Funny. All right, where's Bun Bun? Pick a boo. So I was given a bunch of tomatoes from Uncle Dean. Thank you, Uncle Dean. And I'm making them into salsa while I sit on the porch and yeah. try to not think about all of the things that I, I need to that. do. You know, we always have a lot of projects going on here, um, but sometimes I just feel like it reaches a number that I can't even deal with, and that's what I feel like right now. Our bedroom is down to the point that we're just putting on trim and closet doors and things like that. But there's still so much that has to be done in order to settle into it. Like... You know, we've we've had a mattress on the floor for four years because we've slept in an upstairs loft. And the, that's all that there was room for, height-wise. So we're getting some box springs from a friend. But then I really want Jason to build a bed frame because I'm just excited. It's been so long since we had a, you know, real bedroom like that. So that needs to happen. I suppose we could just put the mattress on the floor until it happens, but then there's the obstacle of getting the mattress out of the loft. We want to move our king-size mattress into our new room so that the girls can have twin-size beds in their room, but in order to get the, the king-size mattress out of the loft and twin-size in, we actually have to take down part of the wall that's at the top of the stairs leading up to the loft because it's the only way to squeeze it out of there. So that's another job. And then there's the window coverings in the new room. That's what I've been trying to think about today because uh, it's really sunny in there and it's wonderful unless you're trying to have babies nap or kind of sleep in in the morning past the sunrise. And so I'm trying to decide on some window coverings that aren't too expensive but we'll do a good job of 
blocking out the light. And of course, I need to um, also, you know, the, the things that will go in the closets that are in there, just kind of setting all around because we have to install some type of closet rods and shelves to be able to put that stuff away. You know, it's it's just this kind of thing. That's just one thing after another. And then outside, um, outside, we are thinking about our fall fest, which is coming up. You know, we do that every year on the first Saturday in November, which is coming really soon. And the ground outside, because you like these tomatoes. Yeah, that's fine. They're sweet. Because of all of the construction and demolition that has happened in the past year. Can you got me a half one. I'm sure. It's half for you. Do you want to share half with him? This is a really yeah. red one. You want that one? Um, <laughs> Leo, Leo's singing for us. Um, because of all the demolition, demolition and construction that has happened this year, um, it's kind of, I think it would be a little dangerous for people walking around at Fall Fest once the sun goes down because there's a lot of uneven ground and rocks and leftover um, demolition or building materials and so that is a priority to get that kind of cleaned up and leveled out so that's a Jason job because he's gonna use the tractor and I can't do that but he's gone today and tomorrow we're going to a family reunion in Illinois so we will be gone all day and then Sunday um, I have a commitment I'm helping a friend out in the afternoon and then Monday he goes back to work so <laughs> Back to it. Not sure how that's going to happen. Let's see what yeah. the boys are doing. So we're just trying to do a little schoolwork in the midst of it. I have kids out on this beautiful porch because it's a yeah. gorgeous day. And me too. And you too. Jeremiah's doing some math. Very good. <gasps> but I accidentally lost the other one that oh, goes like this. And look, now I have to have it up like oh my this. My word, Leo is really <laughs> entertaining us in there. <laughs> well, that was a good job of thinking garden you know you are you have tomato dripping down your chin too he's, he's in the first grade book he's in one one that's right yeah. james is in the kindergarten they're both doing these good and the beautiful hey, math books and i like them a lot around. so james is jumping frogs today right no we're doing this mom um, and this one's flipped around mom what do okay, we do so it says for um five what are we going 20. to do 50, For each box below, million. find ah. that number on the line and then hop two more spaces and what? find out where that is. Okay, so where is number five on the line? Mm -hmm. yeah, where is it? Five. Good. Now hop two more. One, mm -hmm. two. Okay, so you're at the number seven. So that's the number you're going to write right here on the line. Mm -hmm. Okay, so each box you hop two spaces. Good. Now you're going to start on this number. 15. Mm -hmm. So find the 15, then hop two spaces. Yep. Good. Other exciting things on the farm. We have piglets. Tulip has Tulip has had her babies. She had two, bo two boys and one girl, right? No, two girls and one boy. To keep that straight, so we have piglets no, to add to the puppies. Two girls and one boy. Oh yeah. Two girls and one boy. No. No. Two boys and one girl. James, <laughs> you don't know. Well. Yes, anyway. I them. Um. That doesn't mean you know. Also, we so think Bob that our Jersey calf, who actually is growing up, she will be turning two. We think she might be pregnant. No. She has been down at our leased property with a young bull. So perhaps he's grown up too and did his job because she's looking pretty round. No. I ordered a pregnancy test for her. No, 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 no. Which would be no. a good thing. No. Do you remember her name? April. Oh. April. Okay, so start at 10 and hop two. No. Okay, start at 10 and hop two. I'm gonna do a pregnancy update for you guys because I am pretty far along in the pregnancy and it's time. I haven't done an update in a while and I've got some things to share with you. So I'm going to be getting to that, but probably not today. 
That might be a tomorrow thing before we go to the reunion. I'll see. Okay, so this is where we are at with the room progress. <laughs> this is actually protection so nobody runs into that because I have my clothes hung on this makeshift hanger thing with some other things. I just have things kind of piled around waiting to go in that closet. So it's all white. Jason did the final spring. It looks amazing. And he also started putting up trim last night. We have trim there. The window sills, we are going to, we decided the window sills and trim, we're also going to do wood instead of white. The rest of the house has white walls and white trim. But here we're doing wood there. And you can see this beautiful old wood here. Um, all of this is reclaimed wood, all the wood we have in here. And so this same wood will also be used to make trim. Oh, you found some big wood too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that same wood will make trim all the way around the windows. And what else? We unpacked the baby bed. This is a baby bed that we had in storage because we had to use a makeshift baby bed in the loft with the bottom, real short one with the bottom legs chopped off to be able to fit. So I got my actual baby bed back out. Very good. And then, now can um, I get my... oh yeah, you made it to your treasure box. Halfway through the books, they get a treasure box. And then again, at the end, they get a treasure box prize. So fun. So he also painted these closet doors here. Some of them were wood, some of them were white. And so we went ahead and painted them all white so that they would match. So we're going to have them here and here as well. There's more than that. So that's pretty exciting. This closet on the right, will be um, just all shelves, all the way up. That will just be more of a storage closet for some things. I'll show you kind of some of the things I'm thinking to put in there. And then this closet will be the clothing closet. So this will have a hanging rod, shelves above. And then of course I also have storage space up above in those for things that I'm not going to get to all the time. The red door came out beautifully. Of course, we didn't do anything but cover it, but okay. And then this closet. Okay. So let me show you. So out here, straight out of our bedroom, we go into the family closet. Now I have to fit some more kids in here. Um, this is going to kind of be hard to show, but let me try my best. So over here on this side, we used to also have shelving, right? That shelving was removed. Can you see? You probably can't see me, but that's okay. That shelving was removed because, of course, we put a door in it. And so we lost that shelving space, which was mostly Jason and my clothes. That's going in our closet, so that's fine. Totally fine. However, um, I also had, when we had our bedroom upstairs, I had shelves for um, Lydia and Benjamin's clothes. I don't want their clothes up there now. So they need to come down into the family closet. So I've got to do a little rearranging. So what I'm planning to do is this stuff up here needs to be gone through, but a lot of this can move into that closet I showed you. So this is um, extra like school and office supplies. This is actually hats and gloves, which will be coming out soon. And then these two are more supplies. One is Play-Doh. And then another one is some more like office supplies. So all of this can move into that closet because it's things that I don't need to get to all the time. This is a basket of stuff that needs to be gone through and that's a pile of clothes that needs to be put into storage. But the rest of this, okay, the rest of that stays, <laughs> this stuff here, that's cleaning laundry stuff. Then up here, this is also stuff. It's kind of stuffed up there right now because I have things stuffed everywhere that used to be here. <laughs> and now I'm just trying to make spaces for them. So it's been like a total mess for a couple weeks, but you know, it's just the way it has to be. So all of this stuff is gonna be cleared away and put in its proper places, which leaves me these two shelves and that shelf. So I'm thinking I will put my oldest kids along this instead of them here like they are right now, they will move up there. 
Also, that craft box could go in that closet because that's something to get out just once in a while. It doesn't need to be here. So the craft box could go out. And this falling down shelf, I think I've already told you this, but this falling down shelf of games, I'm going to burn that shelf. I can't wait. But all of the games are going to go in that closet as well. So, you know, the downfall of that is if the baby's napping, they can't get a new game out, but that's okay. Typically, during nap times, we're doing schoolwork, so if they wanted a game, they could just pick it out ahead of time. All right, so that's what's happening there. I have some things down, like our, what do you call this thing that used to be up there? The picture hanger is down because I've painted in here. I don't know that I told you guys that. I started oh, painting inside the house to freshen it up. Uh, so I've got this wall done, done that thing? wall done, I, and over here I got the whole it. stairway done. Also in here, and in, in the whole bathroom, I painted the whole thing. I'm so excited. Got all of this painting done in here. Just freshening it up. I used the same color, but it looks so, so good. You probably can't see it on the camera, but the old, okay, so here's an area that I haven't painted yet. This will give you perspective. It was just dingy and dirty. And because of the finish I used, I couldn't clean it. It just wouldn't wipe clean. So this is the new wall. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> and I got a, the next step up, I got a, um, like an eggshell, I think they called it. Was it eggshell or semi-gloss? I think I got the eggshell. The paint lady was helping me. Um, a finish that's a little bit more wipeable than this matte or satin, whatever it was. So. Oh, funny. So I'm slowly going to be painting all of this in here. Um, I started a little bit in the kitchen here, um, above the door and around it. And then I kind of got interrupted and life happened and we had a bunch of places that we went, so. Oh, my hair. Just have it pulled up because it's kitchen day. Anyway, so I've got to finish the rest of this room. And what else? I guess probably once we are rearranging the laundry room, I'll touch up paint in there as well. And then I'll be done. Oh, and I'm going to do the front door because it's also really dingy. Jeremiah's picking out his treasure box prize. We have a big treasure, well, I guess treasure basket, right? Yeah. Yeah, hard hard decision it. here, huh? Brothers are helping? No. no. <laughs> just... Alright, looks like my tomato water, water is boiling. So I need water? to get that, yep, no, no, help peel like, the this tomatoes. Is this, this is the other thing Elsie and I have been doing. We've been making tea. So we picked our blackberry leaves. Elsie picked the back blackberry leaves. I picked peppermint. And we dried them on a, the very, a very, very low oven and then crumbled them and they make tea that's really good for you. Yeah. Not fun and we're labeling them. I'm going to go out here and get my tomatoes. Next year we would like to plant a whole tea garden. I just think that would be really fun. All right. We've got to get these tomatoes in to peel. Put them in hot water and then... Uh, cold water and we'll get those peeled and while they are in there I'm going to chop up these very spicy jalapeno peppers and some onions and we're going to make some salsa. Okay so right now um, mom's gone shopping and we decided to start leveling out um, this, the ground over here where the old house was for um, fall festival that we're going to have. So, it's pretty noisy, but you can see what we're doing. We got to remove all of this stuff so we can get under there. So, uh, 
uh, a couple hours later, we are back. Benny, say hi. One more. <laughs> so, uh, we got a lot, we graded it out a lot, and we got a whole bunch of rock laid down there. So, if you've ever seen that huge rock pile, that's what it was. Right there. And he basically just plowed it down. And we're using that now because um, there was a little, there was a crack in in the right part of the arm, and it basically cracked enough to where we don't want to put any weight on it, otherwise it would permanently damage the tractor. So we're gonna have to weld it um, later, I guess. We're not gonna be able to use it right now. So I'm gonna make do with this uh, grater.